Brothers and sisters in Christ, welcome to our next hymn sing. Today we are looking at prayer. Uh, pray this week as numbers continue to rise uh, for the coronavirus and uh, things still may seem uncertain or unsettled. I, I pray that in the watching of this video and in the singing of these hymns uh, that you would find peace. We begin in the name of our baptisms. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first hymn tonight, as we look at prayer, is Before You, Lord, We Bow. Uh, this hymn was written by Francis Scott Key, who you might remember wrote the Star-Spangled Banner. Uh, he wrote this hymn, Before You, Lord, We Bow, 18 years after he wrote the Star-Spangled Banner in the defense of Fort McHenry in Baltimore, uh, the theme for that, that song. Uh, but this hymn was written actually for the 4th of July in 1832. I, I like this hymn actually as, as a national hymn, a hymn uh, that ties into uh, America and, and patriotism, uh, because it really, it, it's specific. The very last verse, verse 4, earth hear your maker's voice, your great redeemer own. At the very end it says, your sins deplore and bow before the crucified. So while this is a hymn for America or, or for celebration of our, our country, it's specific in that it refers to Jesus and not a vague notion of God. But what I especially like, or maybe something to think about as we kick off this hymn sing on prayer, is, is a word that's used twice in what we're going to sing today in verse 1 and in verse 4, is the word bow. It's in the title of the hymn. It's, it's in the hymn as we sing. And just to be reminded that there is a physical component to prayer that should not be overlooked that prayer does involve our hearts and our minds as we communicate with God who, who wants us to, but that we can use and should use our bodies as well uh, in reverence and joy as, as a way of reminding ourselves the importance and the, the gravity of talking to our Creator and Redeemer. Um, so whether that's bowing for you or folding your hands, maybe some of you like to lie on the floor, uh, prostrate as, as you pray. I doubt it, but you can. Uh, there are physical elements. Maybe you light candles. Maybe you use incense. There's all kinds of things that we can do in the course of prayer uh, to incorporate our environment and even our bodies into our communication with God. So as we think about bowing before our Lord, um, keep those things in mind as we sing together our opening hymn. Tim is number 772 in holy conversation. 
And this hymn was written in 2004 by Gregory Wismer. And Wismer is a retired pastor, and he was a member of the LCMS Commission on Worship. Notably, he was its chairman during the production of the Lutheran Service Book. And this might explain why he was able to sneak in this hymn at the very last minute. Now, many times, sermons are inspired by hymns. I know that I'm guilty of this quite often, but this hymn was actually inspired by a sermon. That's right. Wismer heard Dr. David Schmidt from Concordia Seminary preach on prayer as a holy conversation. And he loved that theme so much that he put it into music. And that sermon and this hymn are both based on Psalm 50, verse 15, that says, Call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you, and you shall glorify me. We come his will obeying, as children bringing needs, we will sing in verse 1. And then in verse 2, these holy conversations begin in childlike ways. And here, our attention is drawn to Luther's catechism, where he explains the introduction to the Lord's Prayer in saying, With these words, God tenderly invites us to believe that he is our true Father, and that we are his true children, so that with all boldness and confidence, we may ask him as dear children, ask their dear Father. So today... As God's dear children, we go before him in prayer, asking our dear Father in holy conversation. Something I've noticed since becoming a father and since my children have become a little more communicative is that the bedtime routine can be a challenge. And in trying to explain to a child why they need to go to bed, 
Why is it important to go to bed? And something that I've, I've done before, and I'm sure most parents do, is, well, tomorrow's a big day. We need rest for tomorrow, or tomorrow's a school day, and you got to get your rest before you go to school. And underlying all of it is some of what, as adults, we experience that rest, sleep, is a means to an end. That sleep at its core for many is a means to be more productive. But that's not the way it's designed by God. And it's not the way that we can best think about it. And our next hymn, Lord Support Us All Day Long by Stephen Starkey, uh, touches on this idea of this, this work and rest rhythm, this pulse to life that God has given. And we see in the Sabbath as God rests, even though he wasn't tired, uh, but he rests and our life is similarly patterned. And in these verses, verses 1 through 3, they're taken from the service of Compline in, in our hymnal. It's, it's centuries old. And, and my favorite, they're paraphrased from the collects, the prayers in here. And my favorite is, is actually verse 1. The actual collect says this. O Lord, support us all the day long of this troubled life. Until the shadows lengthen and the evening comes and the busy world is hushed. The fever of life is over and work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant us a safe lodging and a holy rest and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So I pray that as we sing this hymn that, that there would be a prayer in our hearts that we would look to the rest God gives at night Maybe when you take a nap, uh, not as a means to an end, but a gift from a gracious God uh, who gives us the ability to rest in the peace that only he can give. Uh, so that when tonight I'm telling my children why they need to go to bed, it's because it's a gift from God to sleep and to sleep in peace. We sing together, Lord, support us all day long. Oh, 
Our next hymn is number 844 in your hymnals. Lord of all nations, grant me grace. Olive Wise Spanis wrote this hymn in 1960 for the annual meeting of the Lutheran Human Relations Association of America. Olive and her husband, Reuben, who was a pastor, both lived lives of service and love for the institutional and the social ministries of Chicago. Spanis wrote this hymn in the middle of the civil rights movement, and in it she boldly addresses racial and ethnic and interpersonal relations. And more than just a hymn, she crafted a fervent prayer, a prayer that calls on God to give us grace, grace to love all people, every race, as we'll sing in verse 1. And this love that we pray for, this love that we ask God to grant us, it's not just some human thing, no. In verse 5, we sing, with thine own love may I be filled. With the love of God. Here, we ask God to lead us to show Christ-like love to all people. We join together in singing, Lord of all nations, grant me grace. next hymn is wonderful because it highlights something that, that myself included maybe we take for granted. And that is the ability and the privilege of praying to not just God the Father, not just God the Son, but also God the Holy Spirit to pray to all three persons of the Holy Trinity. Uh, so that's the encouragement as we pray this hymn. As we sing it, we are praying to the Holy Spirit and we're acknowledging the Holy Spirit for the particular things that he gets credit for, for being the giver of faith, uh, to being enshrined in our hearts, giving us the light of Christ, uh, conferring upon us all the gifts of the kingdom. So my encouragement is just to pray to all three persons of the Trinity as, as you are able, as you think of it, to thank God the Father for creation, for the gifts of body and soul, to thank Jesus for redemption, salvation, his death, his resurrection, and to thank the Holy Spirit for making you his temple in the waters of holy baptism. We sing together to God the Holy Spirit. Let us pray.
Our final hymn of prayer is number 773, Hear Us, Father, When We Pray. This hymn was written by Chad Bird in 2001 while he served as pastor at St. Paul Lutheran Church in Wellston, Oklahoma. And I don't think that it's much of a secret that Chad Bird is one of my favorite authors. I, I just got another one of his books in the mail yesterday. Bird's style, both in his books and in his hymns, is rich in biblical imagery. And this hymn is no different, intertwining themes from Romans, 1 John, the Psalms, and Revelation. Bird wrote this hymn after realizing the need for music that connects the prayer life of the church directly to the sacrifice of Christ. He writes, and we will sing about, that our prayers are acceptable to the Father only through the bloody work of the Son. Through the death and the resurrection of Jesus and in the Holy Spirit, we are able to call God not just God, but Father. So we join together singing, Hear us, Father, when we pray. And it is a blessing to be able to pray to him with our mouths and in our hearts and today with our voices. So after we've joined together, together uh, praying through these hymns, let's close with a word of prayer. Almighty God, you have promised to hear the petitions of those who ask in your son's name. Mercifully incline your ears to us who have now made our prayers and supplications to you. And grant that those things we have faithfully asked according to your will, we may receive to meet our need and to bring glory to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. 
The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.